But that's neither here nor there. We've got a brand new day, and it is NFP. We got a uh, PMI coming here in two and a half minutes, so we will obviously wait on that. Um, and here's how I like to usually approach. Let me close this. Here's how I like to usually usually approach most heavy impact news days, like PPI, CPI. This is pretty much standard to what we do. Um, and from what I've seen in um, previous NFPs, at least over the past you know, three or four of them, it's behaved the exact same way. So what I like to do is basically you'll see NFP or these high impact news days guys push price really heavy in one direction. So for example, obviously today, that direction is to the upside. And then usually, not always, but usually, I'm gonna say pretty much pretty much every single time, there was only one CPI day, it didn't go the full distance. But every time it is, I've seen it come back over the course of the rest of the day, all the way back to the other extreme of the news event. So that would mean that bias would clearly look something like this. Looking at this as that sell side draw on both ES and NQ. Sorry guys, I am planning on getting shorts. Um, I'm already kind of liking what I'm seeing here. I like this bearish order block. I like this fair value gap that's right below it. So I am gonna see what this would look like. We got 20 seconds before this closes. See what I'm saying? Like, look at how big this is. So you're not gonna be able to use as big of size today, most likely. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my first attempt right here. I'm gonna go above that order block candle. I'm gonna do one contract, guys, five seconds. I'm gonna enter inside of that fair value gap. Oh shit. So limit. So I'm risking below half percent, but you know, if we get the move we want, like even phew, I actually only need oh, I need three K to pass, yeah. I need two percent. I'm not gonna make the same mistake and be greedy. I mean, I'll probably close it here, but if you guys are in a position where you want a partial and ride it down to here, you can. But yeah, the first attempt's gonna be right here, guys, inside this fair value gap. <clears throat> I understand why we are looking for shorts, this fair value gap, but what invalidates the bullish fair value gaps that formed from 940 to 945? I mean, nothing really. 940 to 945. What invalidates them? Yeah, I mean, Nothing. Nothing really invalidates them. Um, that's kind of the thing about trading is um, that I feel like some people don't really care to admit. People think that in order to make money, you need to know where the market's going to go. That's not that's not correct. You do not need to know where the market's going to go to make money. What we do when we trade is we put risk on the table for what we feel is going to be a high probability move, and we do that over and over and over and over and over again, and over the course of time, we come out ahead. Because of factors like our risk management, our risk reward, things like that. We are starting to tap into this five minute gap, guys. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare. Five minute and three minute gap. Five minute candle just closed. I'm gonna grab an entry right now, guys. I'm gonna cancel this sell limit. Um, just cause I don't wanna miss the trade. My risk is still only gonna be, it's still be under a half percent here. So I would hate to miss the trade because of that. I was keeping an eye on the time. I wanted to see that five minute candle close, so Kind of that little extra confidence for me to put the trade on right then and there was the fact that the candle, I know that this five minute gap's here and the way that it's closing and it's respecting below the gap now. So I'm like, you know what? I don't wanna, I don't wanna miss the trade. I'm trying to be too picky here. So I ended up, yeah, this ended up being my entry much, well, not much, but a little bit worse than, a little bit worse than I uh, was hoping for. So we're in it to win it now, folks, eh? I'm going to say you guys can, uh, I wouldn't, if you entered like where I got in, I really wouldn't TP here just because the risk rewards, it just doesn't make sense. I would maybe at least wait for this order block here at the one minute. 
We're not we're not we're not there just yet, folks. We'll keep this red line here just so to reference it. But um, yeah, this could be an optional TP one for you guys if you want. I'm gonna go break even there, risk free. And um, my target that I want to see hit is this. And that'll be fantastic for me. But if we can if we can trade down through this low with some displacement, I'm going to feel, well, we should be in the clear. Should be in the clear. You know, I would expect this then to be that breaker that would hold price from coming up again. Go, baby, go. Come on. Daddy needs a new pair of socks. But uh, here we go, guys. There's an optional TP1 if you guys want. Do your thing. Do your thing. You guys know the drill. You can't You can't be mad at me if, if uh, it doesn't play out or it does or whatever. Because at the end of the day, you're making the decisions for your account. No one else. My decision for me today is to do what I'm doing right now. I just went risk-free, by the way, yeah. I went risk-free. And I'm out, guys. All right, guys. That's gonna be it for me. I'm not. I'm not trading anymore today. Um, all my takeaway is from today is that, and well, the last two days, is that um, this is exactly why I believe what I believe and preach what I preach, which is paying yourself on the way, um, taking what the market's willing to give when you can do so. I mean, what else are you supposed to take away from that? So. That's that, guys. But yeah, I'm not going to force any trades. I'm not willing to take a loss anymore today. That was the move I wanted. Uh, I did tap into that one-minute gap. Sounds like a couple of you guys were going to go crazy. So do your guys' thing. I wish you guys good luck. Could still play out if it does. It sucks to be me. Otherwise, guys, I will uh, put a bow on this week.